is the start of the week, Monday. We continue our look at the ten plagues that our Lord used to make not only Pharaoh, but the people of Egypt uh, let his people go to free the Hebrew children to worship and follow God. It was the people that uh, suffered the plagues that forced the king to let God's people go. You know, it's kind of amazing. It's sort of like we forget no matter what happens or what time or place, governments reflect the people. And I don't care if it's a dictatorship or whether it's a democracy. The government's going to do what the people let them do. And when the people have enough, then the government has to cave in. And you see Pharaoh caves in because finally after the ten plagues, the uh, Egyptians have had enough. And they say, let these people go. And I think it's kind of interesting as you look at the plagues. We start out with uh, the uh, plagues with the gnats being the finger of God. And then you're going to see the hand of God. So God starts getting heavier and heavier with these plagues. And they start becoming more and more personal. And they start to attack the individual and uh, the, the food supply and, and become a personal thing. So uh, as we look at the ten plagues, we're going to go ahead. We're halfway through. Uh, this week, uh, I want to thank all those that were in our worship service in our Bible study yesterday. Uh, now, last week, we ended our time halfway through the plague. So today, we'll pick up with the sixth plague, the one with boils. Let us read the biblical account of this event. Exodus 9, 8 through 12. Then the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Take for yourself a handful of soot from a furnace, and let Moses throw it towards the sky in the sight of Pharaoh. And it will become fine dust over all the land of Egypt and will become boils breaking out with sores on man and beast through all the land of Egypt. So they took soot from a furnace, stood before Pharaoh, and Moses threw it towards the sky and it became boils breaking out with sores on man and beast. The magicians could not stand before Pharaoh because of the boil or Moses I'm sorry stand before Moses because of the boils for the boils were on the musicians as well as on all the Egyptians and the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart and he did not listen to them just as the Lord has spoken to Moses now the first thing that I would have us uh, point out and notice is that uh, it was customary for the Egyptian priest to throw ashes into the air as a sign or a way of blessing and it's kind of uh, cool when you stop and think about this what was Moses doing? He's doing the same thing the priests do. What they would do is they grab ashes. And ashes through history have been very, very powerful and, and have meant a lot. Uh, even in our day and time, with cremation being what it is and stuff like that, people spread people's ashes out. They have ceremonies where they spread out the ashes of a loved one or, or are put in an urn. And so ashes have always kind of had significance of loved ones. And ashes have always been significant. Also, uh, ashes have uh, been used for uh, mixture with healing properties and stuff like that for a while. But the thing I want you to notice about this in the Old, Old Testament times is that the priests, the secular priests, would use ashes to bless people. They'd throw them on them and they'd uh, do all those kind of things. And even today we have, with Catholicism and with some of the other uh, uh, branches of Catholicism, you have the ashes of the cross that are put on a person. So ashes have always had significance through the history and still do to in, in our culture today. And so uh, this would be a, uh, another way that the God of Hebrews showed he was superior over all the gods of the Egyptians. Why? Because the Egyptians' priests from all their different uh, uh, sects and all their different branches of, of, of gods and, and god goddesses uh, used ashes a lot of, in one form or another. The plague seemed to be getting, uh, uh, well, let's go ahead and go with this. Also, it would have been a display of God's judgment since the suet probably came from the brick-making uh, furnaces of the Jews. Where did they get the ashes? Well, there's a good possibility and a, there's good argument for the fact that those ashes came directly from the kills that were used for making the bricks for the Jews. And so it's, it's divine justice. God won't let the Hebrew people go. So God uh, is, is retaliating because of the fact that, uh, uh, that uh, Pharaoh has um, doubled down on keeping them there and doubled down on making them work hard, so hard they don't have time to think about anything, much less worshiping the one true God. 
And, you know, so uh, divine justice. Now, the plague seemed to be getting more and more intense and severe and personal. And, and so, like I said in the introduction, as we looked at this, it goes from the finger of God to the hand of God. And it seems that this was an attack on the person of all the people. If you have ever had a boil, you know how painful they can be. You know, boils are painful. And, and you see, uh, Jesus even uses it in the account of Lazarus with the uh, poor man sitting at the, at the uh, gates of the rich man and the dogs licking his uh, uh, boils or his uh, wounds. And, and so boils have always been problems. Uh, boils, uh, skin problems, uh, even today we have people that have severe skin problems. And uh, a lot of times uh, there are results from the environment, things going on around us, and maybe lack of, uh, of nutrition. All of those things are, are signs of boils, and they're very, very painful. I have never had very many boils, but I'll tell you what, even something as simple as an ingrown hair can be very, very painful. So boils are not uh, pain-free. I understand they're very painful. Uh, and you see those uh, used uh, uh, not just here, but you'll see boils come up in the bi biblical times all the way up to the New Testament. <laughs> Have you ever tried to do something when your extremities were inflamed and sore? And that's the thing. When you got boils all over you, you know, uh, you never notice how much you use your fingers or how much you use your feet unless you have, you know, you ever had a broken toe? You can't even get it in your uh, shoe or your boot. And you can't walk around like you should without limping and it hurts. And you have a broken finger and every time you touch something, even something as simple as I've got an ingrown uh, uh, fingernail from uh, smashing my finger. And man alive, you don't realize how much you use that finger until the pain shoots up. You, or, or something as simple as a splinter. So, you know, you don't realize how much uh, you are affected by uh, the extremities and the pain even all over your body from boils. Uh, once again, try putting on your shoes or even walking barefoot when boils on your feet. Uh, we do not often think about the personal pain of each person that had to live through these plagues. And this is one is a doozy. This one is a doozy. Every, and, and you can't use your animals. Your animals are not cooperative. Uh, you know, you go to put a, a blanket and a pack saddle on a donkey and he's got boils, or you try to lead a donkey with boils on his face, or you try to touch your donkey and he's sore, or you have your oxen and they're sore. Well, it's the ones that did survive the plague of, of uh, the animals being killed, but you notice it's not just the, the, the people, it is the animals. And, and so life is just miserable all the way around. In time, when the sorcerers needed to be able to counter the plague, they had to fight in a personal and close-up level, for they had the boils themselves. And they couldn't. They couldn't go and get rid of the things they've got themselves. They're, they're hurting. They, they can't move. They can't get around. And, and so they couldn't stand before uh, uh, Moses because they were fighting this on a personal level. It wasn't like the man, gnats, the flies, or the animals dying that, that, that didn't affect you personally and cause you personal pain. This caused them personal pain. And, and they couldn't even uh, fight uh, Moses or stand before Moses because they had boils themselves. And the musicians, this is uh, verse tw uh, 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 32, and the magicians could not stand before Moses because of the boils. I'm sorry, verse 11. For the boils were on the magicians as well as on all the Egyptians. So they had, this was personal with them too. Now it's starting to not just affect those people around them, but people in the palace and those people closest to uh, Pharaoh. Think about trying to get any work done when the people and the animals are in pain and hurting the whole society grinds to a complete stop. You didn't have to worry about, about uh, any building going on. You didn't have to worry about the economy moving forward because everything came to a ground, grinding, grinding halt. We, we've kind of got an idea of that through the COVID uh, earlier months of this year and in the early months of the COVID when everything was shut down and Denison looked like a ghost town. And I'd come in to go to work and there was nobody there. I didn't have to worry about anybody on the roads. And so, you know, everything shuts down. The, uh, and everybody's hurting and everybody's taking care of themselves. Nobody feels good. Everybody's scared. When you, uh, it's personal. When you are sick personally, it really makes a difference. And so now it is a personal attack on the person of each of those people all over Egypt and their animals. Still Pharaoh hardens his heart. 
still he hardens his heart. Think about that for a second. Boy, when a person hardens their heart against God, they really harden their heart against God. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you so much, Lord, for bringing us to this time and this place and allowing us, Lord, to just count our blessings. And thank you for being our advocate, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for making sure that those that oppose you oppose us as well. And Lord, thank you for the reminder that people are the governments. And people are only going to be pushed so far before they push back on their government and make them do the right thing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for biblical history. In Jesus' name we pray.